caught in a trap I can't walk out Because I love you too much, baby what up, fellow nerds, and welcome to another episode of Not Your Status Quo's What Next. And once again, we're going to be talking about what we think is going to happen next in WandaVision. Thanks, Doug. You know, I think that kind of what I said last week about how it's going to, these changes are going to get more and more rapid. You know, we saw in last week's episode, episode four, which is what we've all been doing since this show started, you know, writing on boards, who's a scroll, you know, who's Darcy Lewis, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> you know, why the hex is all this stuff is it was such a meta episode about what everyone has been doing watching these sitcoms. But we've mentioned it before, each episode gets a little more and a little more breaked from her reality. And we noticed once again, you know, we talked about when the babies were born, you know, all of that energy she put into producing those babies kind of she lost a little hold of the reality and we saw it again when she expelled monica rambeau from her sphere when vision came walking back in we saw that very shocking scene and spoilers if you haven't seen it yet and if you haven't seen it yet go watch it because everything we're talking about is going to be a huge spoiler for wandavision but it's his dead body and i was kind of shocked i thought for the longest time that she reanimated him in a like she brought him back to life almost but really it's almost a weekend at bernie's type thing where vision's dead body is walking through town and she's just kind of she's pushed what she thinks vision is into him a little bit and i think subconsciously she gave him this his the ability to discern that something is not right here and i think you know in the end of the show i think vision is going to be the hero of it all but only because wanda reanimated him with that ability so you know, extremely meta, I know, you know, we got the whole, you know, while they're watching. So the universe created a sitcom with two Avengers. And I think that's what everyone thought when we first started watching this. So, you know, a whole lot of things are going on. And I think more and more as she exerts power to keep control over Westview, because we saw in the preview, we saw them running like tanks into the side of the thing. So she's gonna have to use more and more power to keep things the way she wants them in Westview. And whoever is influencing her, Mephisto, is going to have a tougher time keeping her in check. And I think they're gonna be focused, I think Mephisto is going to be focused on keeping her in check. And that's where her giving that sort of ability to discern nothing, something is wrong here and have his almost thought patterns that he's gonna be the one that saves the day. Jeez, Keith, did you bring some suitcases? Because that's a lot of luggage to unpack. Ah? Uh... <laughs> yeah, Keith, that, that is a lot to unload all at once. I mean, it, it started, the show started with the returning from the blip. I thought that was great. Kind of gives you where it is in the timeline. I think it's five weeks after um, when she, when Monica actually goes down to um, back to work with S.W.O.R.D. And you know what? I agree with you. Um, Darcy has got to be a scroll. I, I, I just, she's, she's acting just slightly different. All the answers you seek will be yours once I reclaim your name. Mia Mia? What's Mia Mia? Can I have a word, Jane? Then she was a little bit less annoying in the Thor movies. And that's the same thing that happened in um, Spider-Man with uh, Fury. So I'm thinking that's what's going on. But we know that Wanda's controlling everything. And like Keith said, is she being controlled by someone else? Is she being controlled by Mama Mephisto? I'm gonna ask you rather than make my own assumption. And if you saw our uh, in focus on S.W.O.R.D., we did talk a little bit about uh, Darcy Lewis being a scroll. I mean, she went from a political scientist. To... Look, the lensing around these edges is characteristic of an Einstein yeah, Rosenberg. So a what? I thought you were a science major. Political science. She was the only applicant to astro pseudonami or astrophysicist. Hey, what's your field? We're not supposed to talk to each other. Hmm, Boy Scout leader, got it. And uh, you? Nuclear biology. Artificial intelligence. Astrophysics. We got the full clown car. That means whatever the threat is, Sword clearly has no idea what they're dealing with just seems a bit odd to me. Now, time had passed, and if she didn't get blipped, she had that five years to do it. 
but mm, she's changed just enough that I really am suspicious of her. You know, I've got my scroll search looking everywhere for potential scrolls. I see them everywhere. I may even see them on this video. We don't know. And I also wanted to talk about the ending of that episode where Monica Rambeau, after being expelled from Westview, kind of wakes up and she's like, it's Wanda. It's all Wanda. I have everything under control. Are you okay? It's Wanda. It's all Wanda. I do think, because we know from here that at least Jimmy Woo thought someone was controlling her. This is going to change how they see Westview. They're going to see Wanda as the villain, and I still don't think it is. I think they're going to be focusing on Wanda, and there's still going to be that influencer, Mephisto, that's controlling the whole thing. And I think at some point, whether the rest of the world knows it or not, that there's going to be a sacrifice, whether the Vision, Scarlet Witch, or somebody, to stop Mephisto from taking control of this reality. And I do think at the end of this, we know this kind of leads into the multiverse of madness and Spider-Man 3 and all this. I think she's almost going to have to break reality to save the world. And so she may go down in history as a villain, but she actually saved everybody. Now, Keith, Dave, that is Dr. Darcy Lewis to you guys, okay? She is not a political scientist anymore. Ms. Lewis. Dr. Lewis. We have your gear set up inside. And yeah, I do think that uh, she probably survived the blip, which, dumb name, guys. You <laughs> should have come up with something better than that, which I know that that was in uh, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, but I, I think I preferred when the internet was calling it like the dusting or something like that. But anyway, I don't think she's actually a scroll. I think what's actually happening here is this is just the MCU or the powers that be kind of uh, de-Thorizing her, if you will, where they had, you know, Thor in Thor the Dark World and the original, you know, Thor 1 movie, um, which he was a, a little bit of like a Shakespearean weirdo. He wasn't, uh, he was kind of boring. So tell me about the new direction you're taking the Thor character in. Right, so what I did was take Chris Hemsworth from Thor. Okay. Then I took Chris Hemsworth from Ghostbusters. Right. And I kind of just squished them into one character. Amazing. So he's a lot dumber now. Oh yeah, he's a lot dumber. Like and he, they, they weren't really getting the views out of those movies that they wanted. And in those movies, um, Kat Denning's character was sort of dumb, I guess. They, she was playing, you know, the, the dumb girl of the group. But I think what they ended up doing for her reappearance in WandaVision is, I don't think that she's a scroll. I think what's actually happening is they've just sort of given her a bit of a character shift, similar to what they did with Thor in Thor Ragnarok, where now he's kind of like just this goofy space wandering, uh, pirate guy. It's like a pirate had a baby with an angel. Wow. It's a real wake-up call for me. Okay. I'm going to get a Bowflex. I'm going to commit. Hmm, that's an interesting theory, Doug. Hmm, it sounds like you're defending scrolls. Is it perhaps because you are a scroll? Dave, did we do a good enough background check on Doug before we let him join our videos? I, I don't remember. He seemed to come out of nowhere, just knew a lot about comics and stuff. I, am, I, am I wrong? No, man, uh, I think you're right. I think uh, I think Doug's acting a little uh, scrollish. He may be a scroll. That's kind of weird, Doug. And after last episode, where it was totally about sword and the outside world, I do think we're going to start getting cuts of each, each episode. So I think episode five is going to be a little bit what's going on outside and a little bit what's going on inside. We have so many uh, errors of sitcoms to still cover. We know we're getting like Roseanne, and we even saw a Modern Family type thing on the recent one. So we got a couple of decades to go. I don't think they're going to be whole episodes anymore. I think as she's exerting more power, whoever is controlling and censoring these videos. Who are you? Wow, this is different. What happened? Where'd she go? God, not again. Oh. Who are you? Wanda. There's nothing here. One second, Monica is standing right there, and the next, she isn't. Someone is censoring the broadcast. It's gonna, we're going to keep pushing to new eras a lot faster. So I don't think each episode is just going to be one era. We may get 80s and 90s the next episode, and then maybe the aughts in the episode after that. I think things are starting to move fast. And I think by the end of this, you know, because we were promised at the end of this, we are going to have a battle 
that rivals you know Endgame and all that. And, and they also they actually said there's more special effects than they did in one of the scenes from Endgame. So I do think we're going to see a lot. Are we going to see a powered up Monica Rambeau? God, I hope so. She may have been powered up in that last episode. We just don't know it yet. You know, there's so much going on. Is Simon Williams going to show up as Wonder Man? Grim Reaper. You know, there's hints about it. So, so much that can still happen. We got five episodes left. And really, the sky's the limit with this. I really am just in awe of what a great job they're doing. And it's going to turn out that it's all a simulation in one of Tony Stark's brand new inventions that he created to simulate what could happen if Wanda went crazy. So what you're saying is that what you experienced in the simulation didn't really happen or even matter? Yes, that's correct. So it was sort of like a dream? No, it was a simulation. Yes, but theoretically, if someone watched the events of that simulation from start to finish, only to find out that none of it really happened, I mean, you don't think that would be just like a giant middle finger to them? Well, hopefully they would have enjoyed the ride. I don't know, man. I think you piss a lot of people off that way. Well, Darcy did mention barf. He renamed my life's work, barf. I told him it was a mistake, that my technology could change the world. If that is the case, I take back everything I said previously. If this is all a simulation via barf, Tony Stark's invention, then I'm just gonna pretend this never happened. This will be, you know, uh, uh, Batman v Superman for me. We'll do a back to the editing room and we will redo everything the show should have been. So please do not make this Tony Stark's barf simulation on Wanda losing her mind. And guys, I have a out there theory, I guess. Um, it's not even a major villain in the comics, but things like have been happening. Uh, like so many hexagons on the show, the town shape is a hexagon. The credit scenes is a hexagon. Is Hive the actual villain? Now stick with me here because there's references to Hydra. Okay, Hive is actually the physical embodiment for the ideals of Hydra. So could the Hive mind be the villain? Or is it working with Mephisto in some way? Um, you know, the Hive is, is composed of genetically engineered parasites that were fed a Hydra agent to host around so they could form a singular being. Is that gonna happen here? I don't know, but with all the hexagons, I just had a thought. I actually think you're really onto something. And I was saying that in our last episode of What's Next. I think that Hydra or, you know, Hive, some sort of variation of Hydra, I think is and could possibly be our overarching villain for this entire series. I think that they weren't completely purged from S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't think they were completely purged from the MCU. I think they're probably the villain. Maybe they're working with Mephisto. Maybe they're working by themselves. It's hard to say, you know, um, how strong they are and how much power they actually have in the MCU. But someone has to be producing all of those commercials that keep popping up in the middle of each WandaVision episode, right? Maybe this is the hive mind doing it. You know, you definitely could be on to something, Dave. I, I kept thinking that because in the comics it was hex magic, that they were doing all the hexagons, but that could just be a sleight of hand like we saw Jimmy Woo do with the card that he learned from Scott Lang in the last episode. So it's definitely something. I mean, there is something about Hydra kind of coming back into prominence after what happened in the MCU. They kind of got, you know, kind of beaten down and they're a lot low, but they've always, you know, cut off one head, two more will rise. So we may have the reemergence of Hydra be what WandaVision is all about. And that'd be interesting to see who's leading Hydra. Is it Baron Zemo at this point? Or are we gonna see him off kind of doing a Thunderbolts thing with Thunderbolt Ross and Falcon and Winter Soldier? They, knowing that he's in that show has maybe pushed people away from thinking he is doing something here. And it could definitely be Baron Zemo and Hydra doing all of this. That would be a very cool way to end this. So the last thing that I think I want to mention as far as what I think is coming up next kind of goes back to what Keith was mentioning earlier about Vision. So I want to touch a little bit more on that. Now, what Keith said, super dark. Way to go, like, you know, full-on emo, Keith. But anyway, what I think is WandaVision is going to do what Wonder Woman 84 maybe should have done better or maybe that whole movie should be scrapped and we'll take that 
back to the editing room. But I think what's going to end up happening is Vision is going to realize that he's either not real or he is in reality dead. And I think it's going to boil down to he's going to have to give up his life once again in order to save the people of Westview, in order to undo this uh, this magic or this, uh, you know, power, whatever is turning this town into a hexagon-shaped sitcom spanning all of these different decades. Whatever is doing it, whatever villain is responsible, even if it turns out that Wanda was a villain the whole time, then I think Vision is going to realize that he needs to unfortunately die. Now what this could mean, now this isn't all bad, what this could mean is that maybe we'll find another way for Vision to re-enter the MCU. We said in our last um, in focus videos and I believe in our last what next video we kind of mentioned and hinted at the idea that this could lead into the possibility of Ultron making a return to the MCU and uh, Keith also spoke a little bit about it, this in our last uh, in focus video he mentioned that sword could be the reason that Ultron comes back into the MCU they might accidentally recreate him they might be the reason why he comes back and it could be that Ultron is the way that we get vision back because because as we know, at least in the comics anyway, and partially in the MCU, Ultron is in a way responsible for Vision existing. Uh, they're, uh, you know, of a similar body and mind. But all of that is what we think is coming up next in WandaVision. What do you guys think? Why don't you let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff. We'll see you in the next one.